This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotato.com. Hey, listen! All right, you guys, podcast time. Make it so. It's me, Mario. I'm Batman. Strong am I with the force. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? You're a wizard, Harry. And welcome to World War G, episode 179. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. And I'm Colton. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd help you out, Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. I don't want to be alone in this bravado voice. We've got Morgan Freeman on the episode today. Yep. I'm just sick, guys. Don't worry. I didn't get, like, my vocal cords tightened or <laughs> loosened or anything like that. Although we're in a relatively confined, small space, and, like, I feel like Troy and I, we need masks or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, now I'm all quiet, and you guys are super loud. So I got, I'm going to talk closer to the mic. You're like patient zero, and this is how the zombie apocalypse actually begins. Don't worry. I don't have a fever anymore, Sorry, so I'm not contagious. Me. All right. As he like starts like shaking and, like, <laughs> during the episode. Uh-huh. All right. Um, so in lieu of what we usually do, which is a list or something, I thought it'd be kind of interesting. Maybe kind of help. Help the audience get to know us a little better. Yeah. Uh, we talked about our top five fandoms. Now, I wasn't specific when when I said fandom, so it's really up to interpretation with you guys. Because it is kind of difficult because a lot of times you're thinking one specific thing or it can be it can be pretty broad or pretty, right. you know, vast. It could be like a, a whole genre of something or it could be like one character, one character or... A TV like, show. For example, the Marvel, M- like the MCU, or like a character like the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I guess we'll just kind of go around. Yeah. Uh, we'll do go one more try. Leave us off. First, or do you want to just go? I, I didn't put them in any specific order. Like, yeah, um, I didn't either. Well, it's kind of hard to rank I them. did. I did. <laughs> so, all right. So, because I did... In a specific order, I will go from five down. So, <clears throat> uh, my first, my fifth fandom that's actually been pushed down over the years is uh, Star Trek. Oh, okay. I used to be a huge Star Trek fan when I was younger. Um, my mom introduced me to Star Trek The Next Generation, and I kind of became obsessed with that. And then, you know, I would watch all the movies with the original cast. Um, and I was, I was a big Star Trek fan. I still am, but not, not as much. Not to the degree that you once were. Yeah. Although Discovery has brought it out more a little bit, but, uh, it's, it's definitely at the rediscovering your your fandom. So at this rate, it will eventually not be in your top five, you're thinking. At the rate it's going. <laughs> Probably. Un- unless they really do something to really bring it back full circle. J.J. I- Abrams didn't do that for you? I mean, it was good. I did. <laughs> it had its moment, but I don't think those movies had, like, Lasting staying effect. power. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Discovery is helping that a little bit, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. Okay. Um, my number five. Is actually uh, Sherlock. Whether whether it's um, Benedict Cumberbatch or Robert Downey Jr. or anything in between, I really I don't know. I'm a huge fan of like even the books, Sir Arthur Con- Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, all of those books. I read the majority of them, um, and I think it all stems because I was trying to find where it all comes from, and I'm like, oh, it's because of the Great Mouse Detective. Yeah, that's mm. my like my favorite mm. movie. That's where it's from. animated from. movie. Yeah. So do you like Psych as well? I do. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one too. I've got all all of them on DVD. Oh, man, series. Have you found the pineapple in every episode? Uh, just about, yeah. yeah. I have never seen one. <laughs> Seriously? I'm serious. Except for the ones where they literally like, like, hold it blatantly, in Blatantly, like, yeah, yeah, holding it. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times it's kind of in the kitchen or in the cooking area. Mm. 
So, so have you seen that movie with um, Ian McKellen called Mr. Holmes? Uh-huh. Yes. That's yeah. pretty good. I like that one. <laughs> Oh, that was really good. Wow. And really old Sherlock Holmes. And, yeah. He was more methodical and kind of, I mean, he had to use his brain a lot more and just go, because he couldn't really move fast. And, yeah. You know, it's not as in your face as, like, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s adaptation of it. But, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, for my fifth is actually the X Men, um, <clears throat> just the whole fandom, um, as, as particularly the movies because I was young enough when they came out to not really know that they were terrible, um, right? Yeah. So I really liked yeah. those movies when I was growing up, and I watched the cartoons all the time. And yeah, so X Men is my number five. All right. Do you have a favorite <laughs> X Men? Uh, Wolverine. Oh, four. Yeah. And then Iceman is number two for some reason. I don't know huh. why. I always liked Iceman. Iceman, Beast. Yeah, I always liked them. Uh, my number four is uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, for for our generation, this is kind of like our Star Wars. Hmm? I mean, it's it's huge and it's a giant pop culture phenomenon. And there's this there, there's so much history and so much. Um, you know, so, so, so many memories. memories it's a universe. To it. Yeah, it's a universe. You can just do such a huge deep dive if you really wanted to. Um, and it's timeless. Characters. Yes, I think those movie, these movie, Harry Potter movies, will be mm-hmm. popular for at least as long as Star Wars is, if not longer. Yeah, I, I think maybe they did that on purpose because they don't really. I mean, a little bit when he's in the real world, but when he's in the magical world, if you don't feel like it's an specific time period yeah so do you also have the same i don't know feelings attached to the original you've got the original core harry potter right yeah whether and uh, movies and books yeah and then any adaptation or anything else isn't as good as the original is that what you're thinking you know like where the original star fantastic trek movies or really star wars good. movies yeah um fantastic yeah like i'm just saying fantastic beast is actually pretty good <laughs> mm-hmm I thought, I thought. Well, I mean, it's kind of like the same saying, like with Star Wars, where you're like, oh, Rogue One was pretty decent. Right, you know, it wasn't right, too bad. right, right, right. I think as long as they keep that same feel, which Fantastic Piece was a little bit different, but you could tell it was in the same universe. Like, I don't know, Rogue One didn't really. I mean, it felt like a Star Wars movie, but not as much as you know, like Solo, for mm-hmm. example. Um, but, it had Darth Vader in it. So solo, I mean, I knew what young Harrison Ford looks like, and <laughs> it was difficult to get into that. But I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah, talk about that later. But I, I think with Fantastic Beasts, I think one of the big thing why it feels more like Harry Potter is because J.K. Rowling is writing mm, yeah, those ones uh-huh. as well as she did with the other ones. And J.K. Rowling, unlike George Lucas, is a good writer. Yeah. So it it flows well. So and there's actually you can tell a direction you know that it's going yeah yeah all right um for my number four Studio Ghibli <laughs> just like I was gonna go just say anime in general because I do enjoy a lot of it but it's mainly because of when I was first introduced to it it was the first one that I ever watched was um, Trigun mm-hmm. and like Cowboy Bebop and those were like my first inter like. Well, I guess Pokemon as well, but I'm not a fan. And, like, anime, I think, gets a, a bad rap a lot of the times because it's exaggerated and yeah. it's kind of loud and, and annoying at times. But also... Yeah. Okay. But also, there's, like, these stories that it's just, like, it's, like, a simplistic story and they get down to the core and the animation is, like, gorgeous and the score is, like, amazing as well and it, it works. No, when, when people tell me about, like, certain stories that... <laughs> that some anime films or TV shows are about. I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. Then I try to watch them, and I can't. Really? Because it gets it's really boring. And it, yeah, it yeah. takes a while to really, I've noticed, really get into it. Mm-hmm. What you need to do is hire someone to watch it while you're in the other room, mm. and then they just tell you what's going on. Yeah, that'd be nice. That way you don't have to deal with all the things that you don't like about it, and you can just hear the story and the plot. <laughs> Uh, That'd be a good job. Yeah, somebody somebody should do that. Just go around watching things for people that so they don't want to watch, and then letting them know what's what it's about. Yeah. I don't know what you know. Arrow. How that would? Yeah, yeah that'd be nice. <laughs> you're like that'd save about a half an hour of my life every week. Yeah, 
<laughs> oh, he never misses, and why is he missing so much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all right, for my number four, it's the Batman movies, specifically the Christian Bale ones. Mm. Um, those ones will always hold a special place in my heart. Just I So feel, it's not so much Batman, but those three movies? Those three movies oh, specifically. Okay. okay, interesting. And like I never I never read any Batman comics or anything, but these were the movies that came out when I was old enough to see them. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't know, I feel like all the ones before were too cheesy and I feel like Batfleck is too dark <laughs> and these were like the perfect combination of like comedy and seriousness. Hmm. So yeah. All right. Um so then my number three, no surprise here, it's Ninja Turtles. Yes. Because I've said it before, this was my <laughs> gateway drug into the geek world, was Ninja Turtles, was that original cartoon. And I've always, I mean, I've watched every film, every cartoon series. I've seen the horrible live action stage production. Um, you know, I've, I've seen all that stuff. And it's just such an interesting universe to me because there's so many interesting characters and so many, uh, you know, interesting, um, uh, storylines and, you know, not just the Ninja Turtles themselves, but uh, a lot of the supporting characters are also really interesting. And, yeah. Okay. I'm actually surprised that it's only number three on your list. Yeah. I, know. I thought it was going to be like number two or one. Well, you know, like I said, it, it it was my gateway drug into these into this world, and because of that, I've <coughs> liked a couple things a little more. So, huh. okay. Um, for my number three, it's gonna have to be uh, Star Wars. It it's just so expansive, and there's so many different. Um, I don't know. It really, honestly, feels larger than life. There's a lot of them that still feel kind of contained, even though uh, Marvel is branching out in all different forms, it still feels kind of contained a little bit. But Star Wars, it's everywhere. Like, it, yeah. it, it is just like, I mean, a, and a huge part of my life. And I don't know, I, <laughs> I, I love the video games, the some of the books, some of, like, the movies, just, I don't know, action figures, some of my favorite, like, Memories like growing up, we're just playing with like these little stormtroopers and different things and going on crazy adventures and mm -hmm. I don't know. So having a lightsaber, I still would give seriously would give my right arm for a lightsaber, like a legit one, you know. Well, you might have to. Yeah. Zoom. Just take it right off. I have your left arm. Yeah, if you're gonna be in the Star Wars universe, you'll probably end up losing a limb <laughs> at yeah. some point. <laughs> <laughs> they should just do it where you're just like juggling. It would be something stupid, like I'm just like flipping it around. Yeah. You're trying to be all cool, trying to impress a chick or something. Just <laughs> <laughs> well, that ended that date. <sighs> all right, um, my number three is Lord of the Rings. Ooh, good um, choice. I know that's okay. Lord of the Rings is definitely top ten. Any of these other ones that you guys said as well are definitely in the top ten. Right. So, yeah. 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 <clears throat> my biggest thing is. The quality of it. That none of it looks I mean, other than like the dragons um and stuff, none of it looks CGI'd because it's all practical effects and you know, they spent so much time and effort into the in these movies, you can feel the quality. Yes. And you know, that's something that's really important to me, especially when it comes to the fantasy genre genre, and that's why I like Harry Potter so much and all these other movies. It's just you know, and these are these will be movies where yes, I will spend two days marathoning the director's <laughs> cut mm -hmm. for you know all of them, especially the third one. Yeah, it's okay. Re Return of the King, though. The I'm just saying, like that army that came the in Ghost at the very army. end. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that was a little had, campy. I always had an issue with that. Uh, same here. I'm like, you did so well, and then they just like wipe <laughs> out this whole group of people. I mean, even like they look like they look pretty legit close up as well, yeah. but. <laughs> All right. Um, my number two is your number three, which is Star Wars. All right. Um, yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, uh, just echoing everything you said. I mean, it's so expansive. It, there's such a rich history to it. Um, at this point, even small characters that appeared on screen for a second have backstories mm -hmm. um, and novels about them and oh, stuff yeah. like that. And 
and, and and also what I like about it is, you know, before if a movie came out and it didn't have like a Jedi or a Sith, I would I really wasn't interested, or a, or a, you know like a comic book or something like that that came out. Um, but now almost those characters are almost more interesting than a like a Jedi or a Sith right. or something like that. I agree with that because yeah. they have like different motives and there's yeah. different, you know. I mean. <laughs> It's they're not actually, so cut and dry, you know, good, bad. Yeah. Like, they're not just characters, too. They're, like, people mm-hmm. that they're following, and they have interesting stories. <clears throat> yes. And, uh, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a massive part of my life as long as I can remember. So, you know, I remember seeing the re-releases and when they came out in 97. Um, you know, I remember seeing all the, all the prequels. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of good memories attached to Star Wars, so. Okay. Um, my number two is, this has, like, been more of a recent thing that's kind of, <laughs> like, it was, it was in top ten for sure, and then it slowly kind of, like, moved, worked its way up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Image Comics. I was gonna go with, like, Detective Comics or Marvel ones, but then I'm just like, actually, as far as, like, the ones that I like the most... Mm are these image ones, some of these independent ones that they they just tell us they just tell a, a fantastic story and the artwork. I mean they find some of the best like artists around. So what's the difference between an image comic and a regular comic? Just... Um just the who the um who the what do you call it? Who actually produces producer? Well um they have their own line of them. Mm-hmm. They're more in, they're more focused on independent detectives. You know, it's all the DC gotcha. um, characters, Marvel, and then Image is kind of they can do their own thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> so there's like Nail Biter, um, Kill or Be Killed. Some of these. Um, I don't know. Even like these guys that are typically doing like Batman ones. Um, Scott Snyder. He'll do some independent ones. Man. Yeah. Mm, cool. Like, I, like I, w- I will say that um, <coughs> that IDW has some really good oh, yeah. comic books out there. Oh, yeah. Like, they're the ones that do the Ninja Turtles. They're the ones that do, like, Star Trek and... Dark like Horse that. as well. Dark Horse, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was difficult to kind of pick just one because, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, my number two is Harry Potter. And I think it'll always be my number two. Like, I don't think anything will ever change it. It was the first novel that I ever read in first grade. Um, I was really advanced reading mm. level, by the way, just so you guys know. Um, <laughs> and I probably read through the book series like six or seven times, mm-hmm. binge watched the movies. Uh, it'll just always be one of those things that I try to force on my children, um, oh. make them love it just as much as I do. Watch it. <coughs> Watch it. Mm-hmm. Don't turn away. And sometimes <laughs> tapes their eyes. Be like a clockwork orange. <laughs> You're right. Watch it. Anyway. Yeah. And every time I pick up a little tiny twig or something like that, I still practice some spells. Mm, Just sure. Sure. Fingers crossed. You know. You're still waiting for that. You know. That You're still waiting is, for the owl. It's just yeah. stuck in the mail somewhere. That's it. <laughs> so that, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'd so, still go back to school. Like, you know, he's like, "That's a first year. That looks like a teacher." <laughs> <laughs> that could be a funny story, right? Yeah. You finally get accepted, but it's like way late to the game. You're in your thirties. <laughs> like, yes, finally. <laughs> ah, vindicated. <laughs> um. All right. So the my number one is Marvel. Uh, you know, the comic books, the movies, um, everything, uh, this is, you know, it's, I mean, if, if, if Ninja Turtles is one that, that's, that started this whole world for me, Marvel is the one that kept me into it and expanded my knowledge. And I mean, you know, I, w- I was obsessed with the X-Men cartoon and the Spider-Man cartoon and, and I've seen... All the every Marvel film I've seen horrible, the that horrible '70s Spider-Man TV show I've seen. You know, I mean everything the Marvel has put out um, as far as TV or movies I've seen it. I've read so many Marvel comic books I can't even count them at this point. I mean it, it's just it's it's if you were to look at my life, 
in a graph, uh, I would say about 50% of it is going to be geek, mm -hmm. and about 45% of that geek is going to be Marvel. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Marvel is life. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> in, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, for my last pick, I went more, I honed in on one specific thing, um, and it's going to be Batman. Okay. Yeah. Um, I love the video game, the character, um, just everything about it. Like, even the villains, I think, are some of the most interesting, <coughs> best villains. You know, when you, when you think of top ten villains, at least I would say a good portion of them are going to be um, Batman villains. Sure. Right? Um, and, I don't know, it just, it's just, like, been a big part of my life growing up. I was just like, oh, I can kind of relate to him. And if you're, like, I don't know, brooding or anything at all, um, I love the movies. I don't know. Man, I'm just geeking out here. You're like, Mom, I can brood. Batman broods. Exactly. <laughs> now I'm thinking, why didn't I throw Superman in my top five I know. Somewhere? I, know. <laughs> I, was, I was actually thinking that. You're like, I was oh, thinking Harry Potter when you said one. that as well. I'm like, oh, geez, yeah, I really uh, uh. And You're like, Marvel's my number one. And I was like, that's weird that his number one doesn't even have his favorite character in it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I got to reevaluate you can some stuff. You can retroactively <laughs> change it if you want, Troy. <laughs> yeah. I've got to rethink life. <coughs> well, uh, hmm. well, okay. I think the reason it's Marvel and not Superman is because I consume more of Marvel things than I do Superman things. While I do love the character and he is my favorite superhero, I, I don't do a lot with that. Like, I don't read a lot of the comics. I don't buy a lot of the, the Superman figures. See, half of my collection of comics are Batman. Ones, yeah. But, yeah. And all my, most of my comics are Marvel, so that's why, that's why I said that. Makes so, sense. Anyway. Um, for my number one is a specific character as well, and it's Spider-Man. Mm. I think he'll be the most relatable to me, even He's when I'm... Right. You're the only one that didn't pick a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Um, even when I'm, like, in my 30s or my 40s, because I'll... Oh, I years still, down the road. I like, still oh, <laughs> feel like a teenager, yeah. and Spider-Man will always be a teenager. Sure. And... Yeah, he just the great character. I want to see an aged Spider Man when he's just like seventy, you know. And it's funny that his name they is Spider Man, that. even though he's not. Yeah, Spider Teen doesn't quite feel as right. I want to say they've done an aged Peter Parker. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, and I guess in this new Spider Man, uh, Spider Verse, the the one Spider Man that's teaching him things is older. He's yeah. not a teenager. Yeah, Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. Alright, um, well, I put this on Facebook, and we only got one response, surprise, surprise, and it this was This is why from, we do copyright, guys. That's right. It's from Ashton, and she said her top five fandoms are Harry Potter, number one, number two, Lord of the Rings, number three, Game of Thrones, number four, My Little Pony, yeah. and number five, Star Wars, so... There you have it. Even though that post reached 36 people. Wow, 36 of you <laughs> or 35 of you. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, <laughs> last episode, um, you know, we, we asked for predictions about Avengers 4 and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. We actually did get a response, but it was after we had uh, recorded the episode. So I'll read that now. Uh, this is from Jake B. And he says, uh, hey, guys. Here's my prediction for Avengers 4. All those who are wiped out with the gauntlet are able to slash will come back. Those killed by other means, example Gamora, will stay dead, with the exception of Vision. I predict Vision will come back in Avengers 4 because Black Panther's sister finished something and swiped it off the screen before she ran out of the building. I believe she was able to separate the stone from the rest of Vision and store the remainder uh, in some computer storage when she swiped the screen. Just my two cents on yeah. this on this discussion. Thanks for everything you do for us geeks, Jake B. Nice. Oh, thank you, Jake. Yeah, there you go. <coughs> and he sent that via text, by the way, at three eight five two four zero one six nine two, which you can do anytime. So I I agree with him on mm -hmm. everything except for one thing. I think that there is one person that's not coming back, and I think that is going to be Star Lord. Really? Yeah. 
because the writer said that he's not coming back. Well, specifically him. Okay, so what about uh, Guardians 3? Well, he's not coming back in the Avengers. That's what mm. That's what they said. So you think so, he'll come I think he'll come, come back, back in, for Guardians 3. Guardians 3. Oh, okay. So right. how is that going to work? Because that's going to be in the aftermath of it, right? Are you saying he's dead or come back as far as like well, he's going to be like, oh man, I really screwed up, guys. Well, <laughs> I'm just leaving. I think how it's going to be is that he's going to be dead for the rest of this movie and then Guardians 3 is going to be about bringing him back. Bringing him back. Oh, interesting. All right. Yeah, there, there's some funny memes out there where it just says Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 3 and it's just a picture of Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Sad rock. <laughs> yeah. It's like the only one that didn't like go with the rest of the group. Yeah. I like the, the one where it's like a picture of every person in the movie. It's like, thank you for everything that mm. you did for us. And then in the middle, it's Star Lord and it says, not you. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> or the, like, I've seen so many different ones where, like, oh, I just got the newest, like, action figures and it's just like piles of dust. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. Uh, let's take a break. And then we come back, we'll get to our uh, <coughs> geeky news. And yeah, we'll be back right after this. On the historic streets of Ogden, there are two kinds of people, readers and non-readers. Here's where you can find their stories. Booked on 25th Street, located at 147 Historic 25th Street, Ogden, Utah, 84401. Yeah, stop by and say hi to our friend Marcy. You can pick up a new or used book, or you can sell your own used books. That's right. You can get 10% store credit on what they can sell the book for. Stop in and say hi, or call them at 801-529-7720. You can find them on Facebook at facebook.com slash booked on 25th, or you can email them at marcy at booked on 25th.com, or visit their website, booked on 25th.com. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. Paw, commit an error or two. Still from others, not on your life. Bear false witness against your bro. Covet his stuff. Now that's who you love. I don't know. Yeah, there's. Hmm. All right. <laughs> the Ten Commandments rap. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And we're back. <coughs> oh man. Uh I didn't catch all of your Ten Commandments rap. I caught just the very end of it. Hey, I I have to like learn them somehow and raps uh work for me. <laughs> I'm like Eminem over here. Although if my rap name I would pick uh Skittles for my right uh, rap name instead. Because they're way better than Eminem. You guys will have to remind me to send you um, the video of this pastor who wants to connect more with the youth. So he writes a song. And the the line in the song is, that's why Jesus Christ is my N-word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've oh, seen geez. that. I've yeah. seen it. Really? Yeah, I'll send yeah. it to you, AJ. It's really funny. I, I, I would appreciate that very much, though. So. I'll yeah. probably watch it right after this. Two old white people. Jesus is my... <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have those elderly couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep, I have seen this. Uh, it was like I watched it one time. It was like two or three in the morning. I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad, but it's hilarious. Um, okay, so speaking of not killing people, right? Thou shall not kill. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Boom! I'm segueing even from the commandments here. Um. So, a popular online video game platformer is set to release an exclusive, um, a controversial video game on June 6th called Active Shooter, which gives users the opportunity to be a mass shooter and go shooting up. Like, they go around and you just shoot up a school and you're trying to take out as many civilians as you possibly can. This is terrible. Right? And I would say that this would be fine if, and only if... This video game was centered around a cop who arrives at a school mm. during an active mass shooting, and it's your job to, you know, take down the shooter. But being the shooter, that's just terrible. Yeah, and whoever kind of poor taste. And whoever you know made this video game should you know give a glance to the Ten Commandments. You know, <laughs> yeah, give a glance to like where their life is currently. 
Um, <laughs> and look, I, look, I'm all I'm all for being creative and 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 edgy, create and creating what you want to create, create your art. But there's a point where it's just you have to be. It's not in good taste. Yeah, let's be somewhat sensitive. You know, I think this game, if people play it, are gonna cause people to go out and create mass shootings. No, but it's it's just the fact that you're making light of this situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I did a little Google search here, just really quick, and apparently Steam has pulled that game off. Good. They is, what? <laughs> what the oh, they haven't pulled you off. <laughs> 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 yes. Um, Steam, after pulling school shooter, uh, this freaking computer. Active well, shooter. okay. So, but what's the difference when you're playing like these war games <laughs> and you're shooting Nazis? Because we can all agree Nazis are bad. Is that kind well, of it's kind of it reminds me of that Call of Duty game where in the first part of it you're walking through and shooting people in an airport. Airport, yeah. And yeah. that was so controversial when that came out, and like people were seriously like terrible. Like I don't I don't know what the phrase is, but they didn't want to play the game anymore after that happened. They felt yeah. so terrible. Um, let's see. So really quick here. Let's see. It was a role-playing game called Active Shooter. However, that was the inspired broad protests, including condemnation from the parents of the victims of the mass shooting in Parkland, Florida last week. The game in which players prowl a school <coughs> campus from the point of view of an attacker had its scheduled release canceled by Valve Corporation, uh, the software technology company that operates Steam. Uh, let's see, it was a troll designed to do nothing but generate outrage and cause conflict through its existence. Uh, well, yeah, do you so think they, that it's bad? But I actually think it. that this publicity would work well for them if they were to make another game from the creators of a game that was banned, you know? Could you see it working in that direction? Because I remember it being <laughs> not controversial, but just when they came out with the first rated R animated movie that like DC has done. Yeah. And it was just like, oh man, this, wow, why I have to see this, you know? Well, I think there would be a case for that if one, Steam maybe kept it on there, and two, if um... No, I, I think it works better if it's if it's banned. Well, well the reason I say that is because um, I mean, the, the game is gone. It it was never released. Yeah. Um, and so I don't think a lot of people know that it happened, and so it didn't generate a lot of buzz. Okay, I got you. Yeah. But if it had been released, okay, I get yeah, I mean. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll try to play Dave, Devil well, Devil's Devil's Advocate here, <laughs> Devil, and try to think that maybe the creator of this game had maybe like a good intention behind this, like or maybe had for ended well. people that had a desire to go do a school shooting. You know, maybe he created the game so that they had an outlet to do that without actually doing it. Right, right, right. But still, it's evil. It is. It is. And, and I mean, you know, with the whole Nazi thing, I mean, they're Nazis. They're not school children. You know? <laughs> ah, some of them were. Well, not in video games, though. There were young Nazi children, children yeah. yes. Hitler's youth, youth, and I would I would be upset if somebody created a game where you would you were killing Nazi children because they're children. Can you imagine that would be pretty that'd be pretty dang difficult if you're well during World War II you're asked to kill these Nazis that are invading, and a lot of them are these like little school kids. You know they've got the Nazi uniform and they support him like to death, but take them <coughs> out. You know I mean granted you're probably like nineteen twenties. You yeah. know, so it's not that big of a gap. You know, so you're still considering them your peers, even though they're kids. But yeah. to be fair, I don't think that the German army um, had any Nazis in like the field that were less than like 16 years old. So at that point, they're not really children. They're old enough to know what they're doing, mm. even though they were just following orders. I think they had they had some pretty young ones in the bunch. I I don't think in the field though. Really? I, I, like maybe, uh, maybe producing maybe you know arms weapons and or yeah bullets and stuff, but never like active like 
holding guns and shooting people. Yeah. That's what they do in Africa. Yeah. Um, speaking of guns and stuff, um, apparently Stan Lee was threatened by two gunmen outside of his L.A. home. Uh, according to the Daily Mail, police rushed to Stanley's home after a call was placed to 911 at 7.30 p.m. Thursday night. This was a few weeks ago. Reporting that armed men, an armed man was threatening Lee. Two men were detained by the LAPD, one of whom reportedly confronted Lee demanding money. Officers were called to a property on the uh, 9100 block of Oriel Way. Well, now I know where Stan Lee lives. Yeah. At 7.30 p.m. <laughs> After reports of an assault. So, were they mad because they thought that they invented Black Panther? (laughs) (sighs) I'm going to have to find that old Black Panther picture, (laughs) or Panther picture I drew Uh, when I was a kid. I like how in the article it's like, witnesses claim that approximately 20 cops showed up. I'm sure they just did it just to be part of it. They're like, what the heck, this is Stan Lee's house, we gotta go. Yeah, probably. Any celebrity, they're like, I want to be there. I want to be on the camera. Uh, but apparently, you know, it, it was handled and the guys were carted off to jail and Stanley's fine. Can you imagine if it was actually Stanley that placed the call? <laughs> <laughs> I know. He'd be like, this is Stanley. And they're like, who? Stanley who? What's your last name? Yeah. No, it's Stanley. No, yeah, Stanley. No. What's your last name? <laughs> Oh, we got this senile old man thinking that there's two armed men outside his house. <laughs> he won't tell me his last name. Just keep saying Stanley over and over again. Uh, <coughs> all right. Um, so, I w- I've been going back and trying to watch The Walking Dead and watch the last two episodes because I haven't seen them. To end the season, I'm like, all right, fine. I'll get around. I'll finally get to watching it. Yeah. And now I, I read this story that Norman Reedus apparently is given a deal for $20 million to be the leading man of The Walking Dead. Although in this most recent season, yeah, he's kind of played a little bit of a bigger role, but he's not even in some of the episodes. Well, I think he sees an opportunity here. Yeah. With Andrew Lincoln leaving, he's like... Hey, hey, there needs you know somebody needs to fill those somebody shoes. Needs to step up. So I think I think it was a smart thing on on his on his part. But it's going to be like I can guarantee when Michael Scott left the office, it's not going to be the same. Yeah, and it's not going to last. No, <coughs> you'll maybe get a season, maybe two. So so but, I mean, it's a good money grab for him, but at the same time, doesn't it also kind of suck because he'll be the demise of The Walking Dead. Yeah. Right? That's true, yeah. They're yeah. just like, oh, it, well, it was never the same after after they left. Well, that makes the $20 million deal more appealing, in my opinion, because Andrew Lincoln, he's gone. He's not coming back, so The Walking Dead's going to die anyways. Yeah. So he might as well get paid an extra $20 million for the next season. Squeeze as much water out of that stone as he can. Mm, yeah. I can see that. Um, he, I don't know how good of a leader he'll be, though, for... The show, I mean, he's got, I mean, he's been following his example and kind of in his shadow the whole entire time, <coughs> um, but. Well, I think the the uh, one redeeming thing is the fact that he's like, if there were trophies, like if this was a sports team, he would definitely have the most improved award, mm-hmm. like, because nobody liked him in the first, first couple seasons because he was, you know, the hick that. You know, was rude to everybody. The racist. And, yeah. Yeah. And then they started giving him more depth. Yeah, and then now he's probably some people's favorite characters. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and I think it is isn't going to work because I'm just looking at acting ability. Andrew Lincoln is a good actor. Norman Reedus is not. <coughs> I mean, True. he doesn't have to do much acting in he that. He doesn't have much depth. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, they don't give his character much to do, so if, if he's given more to do, I I don't think he can handle it because he's just not that good of an actor. Now, Maggie, on the other hand, the actress that plays her, I think she could be a better leader. She's leaving, too. Yeah, yeah. I know. They're all just, like, jumping ship. Like, peace out, guys. i got to make something else. They're like her. rats on a sinking ship. Mm-hmm. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Um. So... Uh, this from the, I don't know why this is happening. 
Jamie Foxx has accepted the role <coughs> in the Spawn reboot. Uh, that is going to be helmed by its creator, Todd McFarlane. Um, we talked about this a little bit ago. We did, uh, but we didn't know exactly who Spawn was going to be. Now we do. It's Jamie Foxx. Now, here's a problem that I've been I'm hearing. I'm pretty sure we did. I'm thinking. I don't think so. Really? I'm pretty sure we didn't. Huh. Anyway, so here's the problem. Uh, this movie was supposed to be about the characters Sam and Twitch, two detectives that are in that universe. And Spawn was going to be kind of a... Taking a backseat. Yeah, kind of a boogeyman, kind of be in the shadows. You don't really see him much. But now with Jamie Foxx as Spawn, I'm guessing that Jamie Foxx isn't going to be the type of person that's going to say, oh, yeah, sure, I'll just stay in the shadows. That'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, you'll never see me or my face? Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. No problem. No. I think he's going to force an entire rewrite of this script, and you're going to see... It's going to be a Spawn film. I'm trying to think of other movies that this has kind of happened to. And the only one that's coming to mind is... What's the one where Johnny Depp played a ninja? Or no, and played a um, Indian? I would love to see Johnny Depp play a ninja. Right? Um, <laughs> Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger, yeah. right? He really didn't take that much of a backseat. And also, even when Johnny Depp was in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. Because you had such a big name as Johnny Depp. It was the Mad Hatter and Alice in Wonderland. Pretty much, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so I think you're exactly right that that's going to happen again with this. I don't know why they're remaking this anyway. I think maybe Todd McFarlane McFar saw the success of Deadpool. And another, I think Shades of Water. Well, another um, horrible 90s character that has gained popularity again. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's going, hey, I might want to jump on that bandwagon. I do appreciate that he's actually leading the charge, so it'll be more true to the source material. Yeah. But still. Because yeah. there was another movie made back in the late 90s of Spawn, and it was not great. No. I, I haven't watched it in years, but I just remember how horrible it was, and that clown... Creepy dude. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The Violator. Uh huh. Played by John Leguizamo. Yeah. Yeah, go back and Google that, kids. <laughs> You'll be violated. Your yeah. mind will be violated. Uh, all right. Let's take another break and uh, we'll get to a few more stories right after this. After these messages, we'll be right are you feeling nostalgic about your music listening needs? Do you like the tonal quality that only a record can provide? Then go check out Lavender Vinyl, located at 123 25th Street, Ogden, Utah. Yeah, go talk to Kylie or Blake. They have a large selection of new and used records. Uh, they will also buy your old records, maybe the ones that are just sitting up there in the attic gathering dust. And if you can't find anything, they'll be more than happy to pre-order it for you. Now you can always find them at lavendervinyl at gmail.com. You can also check out their website, lavendervinyl.com, or give them a call on the phone, like a normal person, at 385-240-0336. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. Oh, Close. <coughs> you just dropped a strawberry fritter on the floor. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Does that, not look, okay. does that not look like ground beef? Just like it does look like ground beef, <laughs> right? Like, mm. You didn't like uh, it? No, it's, I think it was extra stale. Mm. You got it from the Seven Eleven, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like, I don't know, they're all right. The chocolate <laughs> twist was really good, though. Just don't tell Emily that I had, you know, went down on, in a bite. Well, you should better not listen to this episode, man. Yeah, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, you are notorious for the, doing this now, Troy. I have to really watch what I say off, like, you know, off the air. Well, luckily for me, I can see when it's going, but you're, like, completely blindsided. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. It makes it fun for me. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sitting over here doing all this, you know, producing all this, editing all this. It... it 
I gotta have a little fun. Okay. Fair enough. All right. That's basically Troy saying, I do all the work. And I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. You know. He's like, dance, monkeys, dance. <laughs> we're over here. Oh, all right. Perform for him. Be funny, dang it. <laughs> What are you talking about? <coughs> Funny all the time. All right. Um, so uh, while I was doing my stuff, we started uh, discussing certain movies. Mm-hmm. Like we, I think we talked about Scorsese ones in particular. Yeah, yeah. Because you had brought up you didn't like Jamie Fox, mm-hmm. be, and that led to you didn't like Django Unchained for one of the reasons because they had so many f words. And that's one reason you didn't like Wolf of Wall Street. Mm-hmm. And then the main reason why I didn't like Wolf of Wall Street. And yeah. yeah. So. so we thought, <coughs> let's forego the other news stories and let's talk about, are there certain things in movies that when they happen, it makes you uncomfortable? It makes you rethink, oh, did I actually Enjoy like that, that movie? movie? Did like, I, I liked everything about it. It basically puts the scene. entire movie on your shiz list because of one thing that happened. Yeah. It's like, you know, this is unforgivable for me in particular. Yeah. I, I don't know if it would put me on my, as you put it, your shiz list because I still would be like, well, I like the whole movie except for this one scene, you know, and I'd still, I don't know. Yeah. I, well, I, know I mean, I for me, it's kind of just the principle about it. Okay. It's like, I can't I can't support a movie or a story that has this in it, and so I don't want anything to do with it, and I'll probably never watch it again. Right. Okay. Like with Wolf of Wall Street, you didn't like it because of the adultery that was yeah. in Yeah. Any movie that has any sort of adultery, I cannot stand, and I will not watch it. It's, hmm. it's not not my cup of tea. All right. I don't know. For, for me, I can watch a lot of things. I'm fairly <laughs> desensitized. Same. Um, but when it comes to, like... Say like the like Human Centipede or yes. the Saw movies or, or something like that. When it's so blatant, like tur- so I think, disgusting. Yeah, they it. call it torture porn. Yeah, <laughs> that's the stuff that bothers me. When it's just so yeah. over the top, and they're just doing it to get a reaction. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have problems with torture scenes in films. Just in general, mm-hmm. mm. they it makes you like, kind of squeamish or like yeah. uh, oh, like bamboo shoots under the nails. Yeah. Oh, Anything yeah. has to do with fingernails. I can't. Oh, did you see um, what was that one? Green. What was it called? Green Lantern. Where? Yes, that movie was torture. That was no, 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 that was like Lantern. bamboo shoots <laughs> under the fingernails. <laughs> oh, I can't think of the movie, but they went and went to this island, and it was cannibals. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, no, I never did. I never did see that. It was, it was pretty dang difficult to watch. And yeah. Okay. So Troy's is torture. AJ, do you have anything that will make it so that you don't see a movie? Like if you know it's going to be in there, you won't, won't want to watch it. Um, tortures <coughs> or when there's rape scenes. I'm yeah. Not, rape is pretty hard. That one. Wait, what? Wait, no. <laughs> Rape is hard to justify watching in a movie context. Rape is hard. <laughs> Colton, 2018. The, the, yeah, those that? ones. <laughs> or, um, I don't know, like you said, torture porn. Or even when they're doing stuff to, like, little kids. Yeah. That bugs oh. me to no way. I can't stand that. And it just makes me, like, that or one. animals. Or animals. That's another one that, like, bugs me. Um, if they're like hurting, you know, like they're killing animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah for, Especially dogs. I don't know why. For me in particular, like anything that has to do with, you know, ad- adult and children relationships, especially now that I have children, that kind of stuff will just make me, that, like, I would walk out of a theater if a movie had that. Mm. I'm like, even Forrest Gump, one of my all time favorite movies, they alluded to that and it still makes me uncomfortable. It yeah, that's still one of the things in that movie that you're just like mm. Mm, Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, and then and then just ex- excessive swearing, like unnecessary F words, like when they say it every other word, where it's just it, it just starts to be like every time you hear it, you like you flinch a little bit or your eye twitches, you're just like, gosh, will you stop with the <laughs> stupid swearing already? It's not funny at this point. See, and and me, it's, the F word doesn't bother me too much. Uh, it the, just kind of goes. The N word bothers me. Yeah. And I, I, be it, I keep going to Tarantino films, right? <laughs> and I know that's coming, but uh, yeah, that that really start to bother me because it's just so he it, he just makes it so blatant. 
Well, and then they they hard R it like yeah the hard R yeah mm-hmm. that's really what sets it apart. Yeah, I just I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's some other stuff. Um, <coughs> what about like a uh, hundred and what twenty seven? What was oh, that? One hundred twenty seven hours. Twenty seven hours. Yeah. Oh, that was hard to get through too. Yeah, right. Yeah, that that was the movie that almost made me faint. <laughs> In the theater. That, that's the only movie. I had oh. to get up and leave for a second. When it's cutting through that nerve. Yeah. Oh. It looks too realistic. It does. It they did a good job with that. And that was a fantastic movie. Too. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. good. But, yeah, that was a little that was a little much. Um, I'm trying to think of some others. Well, it's weird. But, like, I find my mind trying to pick out movies that I didn't like. And then, like, dissect it to be yeah. like, why didn't I like that? I think if... <coughs> If a woman gets shot in the head and you see her get shot in the head, that bugs me a little bit. Um, really, any, actually, anytime anybody gets shot in the head and the brain's exploding, that's a little, a little hard to watch. But um, I don't know. Like a lot of this stuff, it seems like more the subject matter is what bugs me, not so much the actual seeing it on screen because I know it's not real. Right. I know they're actors and I know it's, yeah, it, it's all, you know, they're just doing it pretend, pretend, but it's the subject matter. Um, that it seems like they're just doing it to get a response. Right. From the audience. One, one that kind of bugs me. Well, not bugs me, but makes me more uncomfortable, especially when I'm watching with like a large group of people is sex scenes. Like having to watch like, Full on like sex scenes with like Your a ton parents. of other yeah parents or a ton of other random strangers and you're just kind of like sitting there yeah. and see the strangers don't bother me much really honestly but the parents yes parents. And, or if I was with anybody that I know you're just sitting there like mm, you're like how do I uh, react to this like do I like I don't know smile do I cover do I, my eyes yeah. do I just stone face it like yeah. what, what do I do I don't know. that's I the reason you can't watch I just cover my eyes. <laughs> Good call, especially if Emily's there with you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just like, oh, I, I, okay. no, I do it always, even if she's not there. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a wink right. is as good as a nudge to me. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I think those are my only buzz topics. Anything else I can handle, and I'm like, I don't want you guys to think that I'm not okay with swearing because I am. My yeah. parents swear like sailors, and like it's just when. I don't know, especially when women swear. I don't know what it is about that. I just think it just sounds too sharp, makes especially them, the F word. It makes them a little less sexy. I actually think it's kind of hot, but really, that's just me. I do. Okay, when, when women, mean, when, it, when they smoke, Jody, some of them, like, like that? thinks it's hot when girls swear. <laughs> she does. She, she, she knows? <laughs> she's got a, yeah. a voice. She's got a, like a sailor. mouth on her sometimes. Um, but yeah, uh, anyway... And you know, and when, and when you brought up that cannibal film, mm-hmm. I I still have not watched that movie Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, because I know it's not real, but it, <laughs> they they make it look like this is happening. This was a real thing, and if it's if it's a, if it's a movie that is ultra realistic, I tend to stay away from it. Okay, because it's just it's although you like much. ones that are like factually based. I do. Yeah, but. As long as they've been, like, uh, Hollywoodized. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> Public Enemy, for example, Johnny Depp as John Dillinger. Real story, but they made it pretty much like an action film or, you know, like a heist film. I did like that one. Well, what about the face? He gets shot in the face. Yeah. And, and even that, that was overly stylized. Mm-hmm. And it didn't look that real. No. Um. But, yeah, if... if yeah, like I said, if they make it too real, if they use those cameras that, like, handheld cameras, like camcorders, basically, mm-hmm. uh, instead of the nice film cameras that make it look all clear, if it's really dirty and gritty looking and stuff, that makes me uh, uncomfortable. Really? Yeah. So, like, the Blair Witch Project, those kind of movies? Yeah. Um, you know, that one at this point is kind of cheesy and, and a little ridiculous, but... Yeah, no, it's just something about those movies that just makes me feel a little uneasy. So any movie that, uh, basically that Michael J. Fox is filming, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, his whole movies are really be- hard for me to watch. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. As Same. far as far as I go. Um, oh, there, there is one more thing. 
and I'm 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 trying to get over this one because people know I'm a f- I'm I'm fairly liberal in my leanings, but um um two guys kissing still bugs me a little bit. Yeah, that's a no for me. I I I try to I try to look past it, try to just think whatever you know. Yeah, whatever. But it's there's still that little part of me. I've I've yeah. talked about this with with many people about why um, seeing two guys kiss makes you uncomfortable. No one can put a finger on it. But everyone that I've talked to, this is men and women included, they say they would rather see two girls kiss than two guys kiss. Mm. Like even even girls, they would they said that they would rather see girls kiss. Yeah, wonder what that is. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe because kissing is kind of a feminine act, Mm. and if you see two dudes doing it who are supposed to be (laughs) masculine, like it's okay for a guy to kiss a girl because you know it's feminine for the girl side, but two guys kissing is not really very. Feminine, uh, but but like I said, I'm 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 fairly liberal. I don't I don't have any problem with with gay people, homosexual people. I don't. It's just <coughs> seeing it on screen. I don't know. Just yeah. <laughs> same here. Ooh, especially in like when it's actors that you know, mm-hmm. like you've seen in other stuff before, and you know that they're straight. Like yeah. that one movie, Love Simon, that mm-hmm. just came out. Yes. It's about the kid, and he kisses um, the kid from The Flash. Yeah, he kisses Kid Flash. I I didn't watch it. I couldn't. Yeah. I was like, I sorry Flash, I cannot eyes. tarnish your yeah. flashiness yeah. with this flash. Tarnish the flashiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's that's right. I think that's what made me think of that is Love Simon because I saw the end of that, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to work past it. It's just my <laughs> it's just my issue. No, that's not something that anyone can hold against you. Yeah, I know. You, you like what you like, and you don't like what you don't like, you know? Yeah, there you go. <coughs> All right. Um, so let's take our last break, and when we come back, we have a uh, movie review. Yep, a couple you. movies to talk about. we back right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Thanks, Joy. Hi, everybody. This is Sean Ray. And John Irons. And we're the hosts of Cosmic Potato, the Super Fan Talk Podcast. We're a show that has a little bit of everything. Yeah, we talk about movies and TV and cartoons, entertainment news, and every show has a different theme. That's right. We might discuss anything from our favorite bad movies to who would win in a fight between C-3PO and the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was episode 41, a classic uh, you can download that episode and all of our other episodes on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, we're on Podcast Addict and, of course, on our website, CosmicPotato.com. It's special guests and movie news and geeky nerddom and nerdy geekery and lightsabers and Time Lords and Ninja Turtles all the way down. So check out uh, Cosmic Potato, the super fan talk podcast. Like where the sidewalk ends. Mm-hmm. Or I just, I want to get that new, or not a new book, but I did see it, and it would be the best book to read to kids. It's called Go the F to Sleep. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's that's one that I want. <laughs> or if you don't want to read it, just just play the, the Samuel L. Jackson uh, version, because he recorded it. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that would be so great. Yeah. That's the only time that F-words are okay, like, <laughs> when you're like, saying them to children. Oh, no, yeah, when yeah. Samuel L. Jackson <laughs> is saying them. Yeah. <laughs> Although Agreed. he did way Agreed. too much in that one, uh, what was the, where he was Hitman's being protected? Bodyguard. Hitman Bodyguard, yeah. I was going to say, any movie he's ever been in? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Speaking of movies. Right. Yeah, we're back. Um, I actually caught it that time, so I'm like, oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Or did we let you catch it? No, dude, you started <laughs> leaning in towards your mic, and I realized, I'm like, oh, oh, oh that's a clue. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm just going to be like this the whole time now. <laughs> I'm going to get a lapel mic. <laughs> All right, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a couple movies that we've talked about previously, but now that we've seen them, we just want to go over them again, so. So, Solo. Solo. Yeah. It was pretty dang, it was, it was not your typical Star Wars movie, but it still felt like a <coughs> Star Wars movie at the same time. Yeah, my mom didn't like it. Really? really? That's she did not surprising. Like it. It was, I know. It's because she grew up with Harrison Ford as a young actor, I think. I think so, too. I think that's, that's probably the main thing. Because um, you remember seeing Blade Runner, you know, back in its prime. Mm-hmm. 
But I do think that um, Donald Glover did a fantastic, fantastic oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lando. So good. And, you know, just before you get into your review of it, um, it didn't feel like Han was Han the entire movie until the very end in that last confrontation with mm-hmm. Lando. That was like, if I close my eyes, he even sounded like Harrison yeah. Ford. It was crazy. And when he told told Chewie to rip his arms off, I was like, oh, yeah. classic Han. <laughs> oh, Han. But yeah, up until that point, it didn't feel like Han Solo. It just felt like a great Star Wars movie. Yeah. And then now I see it. I did also really appreciate like <laughs> the backstory. And I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. And even that one scene where he gets his last name. Right, where he's traveling, yeah, traveling yeah. solo. I'm like, yep. oh man, I get it. All right. I, I thought it was really funny that a no name gave Han Solo his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this iconic character, that's how he actually got his name. I'm like, oh, all right. I thought it was interesting how he spent three years in the Empire. Right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, then defected. As a, as a stormtrooper, yeah. I never. I, I, I've heard rumors that maybe that was his backstory, but it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was really cool to see just that history and so these movies take place 10 years before um a new hope right uh that one yes i believe so yeah what did you think of amila clark um as kira yeah i thought she was fine she did pretty yeah she was she was pretty good she played the role although it was really it was kind of interesting that they mixed star wars with Marvel. I'm like, wait, what's Jarvis doing up here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the vision? What's he doing? That is really funny. No, there's actually a really funny clip um, about how Paul Bettany got that <coughs> part. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he was on. I think he was on the Tonight Show because he has Ron Howard's number. You know, because they did um, one of the Da Vinci Code movies together. I think he was in the first one. It was the first one because he was, mm-hmm. he played that one dude where he's like whipping, whipping himself. himself. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He was the monk. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he sent. Ron Howard a text message that said, "Have you ever sat on a nice summer evening and wondering why you're not in a Star Wars film?" <laughs> and and Ron Howard messaged him back. He said, "I'll get back to you." And two weeks later, he was on set. That's so, cool. Yeah. Dang, that's pretty awesome. That's when you know you have sway as an actor because I think he's a fantastic actor. Oh yeah, he's yeah, great. so good and like he's so diverse and he can do a lot of things. It was a nice surprise. Yeah. So let me ask you then, what do you guys think? And it's been it's been far out now. The very end. The very end, that cameo Darth Maul. What do you think? It blew my mind and only because I haven't seen any of the Clone Wars. Because I was talking to my little brothers after it and they say that Darth Maul's in the Clone Wars. He is, uh-huh. yeah. And so I just I didn't know that he was back and I'm like, Okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, I like it. And I didn't know if it was him or just someone of his race until he had the double showed the mm-hmm. double sided lightsaber, and then and it was like, "This is you. cool." Mm-hmm. That's him. Yep. How? I want to know. Yeah. Right. They, and they they talk about how <laughs> in the Clone Wars you have to show how he survived. Um, and, yeah. yeah, I do need to watch those. He basically survived on pure rage and hatred. Oh, cool. Yeah. Reminds me of Darth Bane. That's how I survive as well. You know. That's how, yeah, that's how I <laughs> live day to day. Did you ever read Darth Bane? Darth Bane. Yeah. No. It's a, it's a book. It's not canon, but it's really good. Sith book. Not uh-huh. canon anymore. Yeah, not, yeah. not canon anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, you should totally read it. It's awesome. So out of uh, out of five um, <coughs> um, Millennium Falcons, what do you guys give it? I'm sitting at like a three, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Really? I'd give it a four. I really enjoyed it. All right. All right. Fair enough. Um, what, what were you sitting at with it? What I think I gave it. It was less than Deadpool because yeah, you pointed one that one out. Deadpool, one so I, I think I gave it three. Okay, two and a half or three. I can't remember which. Okay, I mean, it's a solid, it's a solid <laughs> it was film. two and a half because Deadpool was three and a half. That's right. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Two and a half. All right, and then uh, I saw Life of the Party um, with uh, Melissa McCarthy pulled over here, just like. It was amazing, wasn't it? It was like the best movie you've ever seen, right? Right? It, right? it was funny. Uh, I laughed through it, throughout it quite a bit. Um, but we were talking, and I think the improv was just a little too much. Mm-hmm. You could tell that a lot of Melissa McCarthy's scenes were improvised. And a little bit's fine, but when you can start to tell that every take was improv, it was, okay, let's 
back off on that, get back to the script, you know? Yeah, because then I think you're giving like, the actor and the actresses like way too much liberty, and you're forcing all these other people that are typically, like, that are pretty decent to have to, like, just have yeah, their, they you, want their act- reactions, basically. Yeah. Yeah. When you improvise, you're, you got to make sure that the per- people that you're working with are okay with improvisation, or if they're used to right. it, because if they're, if they're used to working off of scripts, with which I'm sure most of those kid actors are, then it's going to really throw them off guard and yeah. might make the scene feel weird. Like her daughter, I think you could tell in some scenes that she was uncomfortable yeah. with some of the Im- improv scene. Mm-hmm. Well, but it was good also, because it came across as, you it know, did. it's my mom saying yeah. all this stuff. And right? there were some actual genuine laughs mm-hmm. that she had. You could tell that that wasn't part of the, part of the script. She just... Couldn't help herself but laugh. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I mean, overall, it was <coughs> it was fine. It was one of those movies that you know you're not going to remember mm-hmm. ever seeing. Um, Had a great plot twist though. It did. Yep. Um, wait, no, I know. I'm trying to think. Now I'm trying to think of the which plot to, twist you're talking about. The, the sun. Oh, oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm usually was, pretty good at guessing stuff like yeah. that, but that caught me off guard, and I was pleasantly surprised. That was that was pretty funny. I like that. So, uh, <laughs> out of uh, five um, um, frat parties, I suppose, I think you gave it the Googles. The Googles, yeah. Um, I'm sitting at like one and a half. It was funny. I enjoyed it, but I'll, I'll never see it again. Only one, point, one full point less than uh, Solo. Just so you guys know. Is that going to be your <laughs> your grade now? Well, it's two and a half, that's your five. So, I mean... It's, it's two and a half is not my five. Well, five <laughs> out of ten. It's okay. Like okay, average. oh, I got you, I got you. It's right there in the middle. Okay. <laughs> that's why I was like, it's your five? Wait, what? <laughs> no, two and a half is Colton's five. You know, <laughs> for, for Troy and I, that yeah, that's like our two and a half. Yeah, that's kind of true, actually. <laughs> Yeah, we do. You tend guys are more to, critical. Yeah, you guys are the the Rotten critical. Tomatoes critic score, and I'm the user score. There you go. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, okay, so I also saw Upgrade, and I think I'm the only one that's seen this, right? <coughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I didn't know really what I was what this movie was about when I went and saw it. Um, I knew a little bit. I really hadn't seen the trailer, um, but I heard it was good. So I had some time, went and checked it out. Um, and the plot synopsis is basically this. There's a guy and his wife. Um, the guy is a good mechanic. He builds old, old cars. It takes place in the future where nobody drives cars anymore. It's all automated. Um, and so he sells these cars you can drive yourself at, like, really high prices. So. Yeah. Uh, this tech billionaire uh, orders him it's, to... It's kind of funny where he corners the market, but it's by doing, like, less. Yeah, pretty much. Oh. This uh, tech billionaire orders him to... Uh, orders a car to be made. It was like an old-fashioned... Oh, orders him. You, do it now, peasant. I think it's like... I want to say it was like a T-Bird or, or something. I can't remember exactly. I'm not a car guy. Anyway. So he, he does that. He drops the car off. Um, they go in and talk to him. And he shows them what he's been working on. And it's this little microchip uh, called STEM. And he said, basically, what STEM can do is you implant it in, into your neck, into the, the base of your skull. And it will cause people, if they're paralyzed, to move. It will, you know... Um, it, it basically helps with disabilities. Yeah, disabilities. That it's right, exactly. So what happens then is on the way back, this couple gets into an accident. Um, they get attacked from this gang uh, that you learn more about later. <coughs> but the wife gets shot and killed, and the other dude gets paralyzed. And how he gets paralyzed is you know how they use that gun thing to kill like cattle? Yeah, yeah, the cattle yeah, prop. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, you're talking the, the, actual, the yeah. little bolt? Yeah, the bolt. Air-powered bolt thing. Uh-huh. That's what they use to paralyze this guy. Like No country for old men. Right into of. his neck and... Yeah. Oh, jeez. Pretty brutal scene. Yeah. But anyway. And so what happens then is that guy gets implanted with stem, 
and he then starts to gain these abilities. Um, obviously, he can move again, but he then realizes that Stem is an AI, and it starts to speak to him. And I'll leave it there. Um, it's a really gritty movie. Um, it takes place in the future, but it's the kind of future like a Blade Runner type of future, mm -hmm. where it's not all bright and shiny. It's very dark, uh, gritty, dirty looking future. Um, and the so he, he goes on a revenge rampage, right? He, well, kind of, yeah. That, yeah, he does try to find the people that killed his wife. <coughs> um, and that's kind of how it starts out, but obviously it branches off from there. Okay. Anyway, uh, and the guy that that is the main star, I'm not sure of his name. He looks like Tom Hardy, but it's he not does. Tom Hardy. Yeah. I noticed that too. I thought it was Tom Hardy yeah. in the trailer. It's not Tom Hardy. Um, but what I liked about him is he's really good at playing the average guy, not, you know, uh, not knowing what's going on. But he's also really good when it comes to the fight scenes because mm -hmm. you kind of forget, oh, he had to learn all this. Logan Marshall Green is his name. Is that his name? Logan yep. Marshall Green. All right, thank you. That's way off from Tom Hardy. Yes. <laughs> he was and in so, Prometheus, Spider-Man Homecoming, and a couple others. Who was he in Spider-Man Homecoming? Oh, he was the guy that um, the Vulture obliterated on accident with that gun. Oh, he was the original Shocker. Yeah, yeah. The Shocker. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, well, there you go. So there's some context for you. But yeah, he's he's really good, and um, he he has some funny moments, he has some serious moments, and he plays them all really well. Um, and so, out of uh, I guess out of five microchips, I guess I'm I'm sitting at no so now 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 choice. Now I'm trying to <laughs> right. Um, is it better system. than Solo, or is it better? <laughs> <laughs> No, I would I would give it three, okay. Only because I didn't know what it was going in, <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised, and I I really enjoyed it. Show that's so. cool. That's kind of fun, just going into a movie and yeah. not knowing, like based on zero trailers, yeah, pretty much. And for me, that's rare. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, not only you know because of the podcast, because I work at a movie theater, and so not knowing what movies about is really rare for me. So. Not not gonna lie, half the time when Troy's reviewing these movies, then it like makes me want to either see it or not see it. He's kind of giving me the cliff notes. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you go check this one out. It's it's pretty good, pretty fun. All right, um, I think that's just about it then. There you go. Uh, so if you want to listen to our other episodes, you can find us at worldwarg.podbean.com. Also, listen to us at Cosmic Potato. Dot com. We're part of that network. You can also find us on iTunes and Google Play. Uh, we're also on the social media. You can find us at facebook.com slash worldwargpodcasts. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at podcasts, which I have been doing a little more with both of those. Um, I have been tweeting a little more lately. Uh, if you want to find any of our merchandise with our logo and all kinds all other good stuff, you can go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash World War G. Uh, you can also email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. Also remember, you can call or text the show at any time, just like Jacob B. did at 385-240-1692. So this has been World War G, episode 179. That has been AJ. That has been Troy. And I've been Colton. Uh, stay geeky, my friends, and uh, don't don't ruin the flashness. That's all, folks.